Doobity bitty bang, doobity bang, doobity bong. English humour, it has certainly helped me in my professional life, particularly when working with non professionals, with young people, and one has to uh, gauge the sense of humour correctly. If in, in a multinational situation, you have to be very careful not to um, use language that is exclusive to uh, British speakers and the others won't understand, so you have to be a bit careful. But uh, yes, British humour, there is a lot of irony, there's a lot of surrealism, a lot of play on words, that sort of thing. That sometimes comes over in my rehearsal technique. So you're not going to do that while I'm singing. Sorry, but no, no, you're recording. Everybody records and um, Chris is recording. But have you come to sing? Three skills for a good musical teacher. Heavens. One, I should think, would be infinite patience because things don't always happen overnight. I would say also you have to have an understanding of how people find it difficult. You may yourself find it exceedingly easy, but you have to be able to understand that there are people who do not find it as easy as you are, and you must not lose your patience with them. You must find a, a way of explaining and carry it through to the end until they have it. Probably the third thing is that you actually have to like young people if you're teaching the young. I think it comes over very quickly if you don't connect with young people or perhaps if you don't like them very much. I think they suss this out very quickly. So you've got to have a good rapport, a good relationship. The evening hangs. This is eventually going to go very slowly. Let's see how we go. Remember consonants. One, two, Three. In LMFL I meet all kinds of students from all over the world and very varied in nationality and in age and in musical standard and of course in the instruments that they play. But we all seem to come together and cooperate and rub along very happily together. Sorry, because the is such a a funny old vowel sound to sing. The Eve. Okay, two, three. The, the choir. Yes, I think the choir works if everybody comes. There are a lot of activities on this course, but there should be one activity that includes absolutely everybody. And of course, it cannot necessarily be the orchestra because not everybody plays an orchestral instrument. But everybody has a voice and everybody can come and sing and I think it's very stirring at the student concert at the end of the course to see all members of the course standing together singing as one choir and people have told me that it's a very wonderful and emotional experience for them. The choir before I come is a bit of a blind date so I don't quite know who I'm going to get and the standard I'm going to get. So I come equipped with a good deal of music, some of it easy, some of it more challenging. And I try things through and if they're not working, I'll uh, dispense with it and do something else. So uh, this year, this particular year, this particular course, we're doing a piece by Eric Whittaker, as you will know and it's not easy at all. It's very beautiful and it challenges them just about to their limit, I would say. I do hope we're going to be able to perform it on Saturday. Did you do this yesterday? Right, okay. Altos. It's a bit low, darlings, I'm sorry. Oh, two, three. The evening hang. I think on the whole it works exceedingly well, actually. We have as you will no doubt know, we've taken this course to a lot of different venues in the UK and of course abroad, and some work better than others, but this is a good space. We seem to have plenty of room, we seem to have plenty of pianos, and it works rather better than um, some other venues that I've been to on other courses. What I meant was it should all be pianissimo and there should be no nasty bumps in it. It should be incredibly smooth, all right? You were asking about the difference between the way music is taught in the UK and the way it is taught in Europe. And 
I think uh, there are very different schemes for teaching music in, um, in other countries. We're slightly suffering in this country because of the inevitable cutbacks in education. So sad to say that um, funding is being cut. So children are not always having the good deal that maybe some of us had in our youth, which is a pity because every child needs music. Every child who learns an instrument by some miracle to improve their overall performance at school. So it's something that should not be denied any child. Okay, can everybody stand up pretty straight? No hands in pockets, please. Copies actually being lifted up would be lovely because you really look like a choir. I have been coming here for about 10 years, I think. And uh, of course, as I say, we have been at various locations around Britain. There's very excellent and wonderful and talented musicians who work alongside me here and it's a privilege to know them. Yes, indeed, I just came because somebody else some many years ago was unable to come and uh, Arlette said, would you like to do the choir? And I did and I've gradually got a foot further into the door and this is where I find myself here. I am no longer, I used to be a school teacher in my profession, that was mainly what I did, as well as being a freelance musician. So my free days were governed by school holidays, but I'm no longer teaching in school, I have retired actually. So this is like a sort of holiday for me, with a bit of work thrown in. Okay, so that, that was very nice. Let's, let's try this and see if it works. Let's just try this phrase, starting upon my pillow, okay? And it's oh, 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 oh. What is music for your life? I can't remember a time when I didn't have music in my life. Probably to the great annoyance of my parents, I think. I was playing the piano at four and I haven't stopped. And uh, it's just absolutely central. I quite, can't quite imagine what I would be doing otherwise. Thank you. Right, okay. Could you stand, please? We'll see how far we can get. We won't push ourselves from the very beginning. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Music for human beings is essential and should be available to all, as I have just said. I went to see a community project in Essex near London and there were a lot of people from children to middle-aged people who were taking part in an opera experience. To see the expressions on these people's faces was extraordinarily moving. They were completely absorbed in what they were doing and they clearly absolutely loved it. And it was one of the most amazing evenings I've spent actually uh, watching a, a musical performance. It was just tremendous. And these people's lives were clearly entirely transformed by what they were doing. And the, the love with the singing and all the rest of it. And it was just truly amazing. And I'm so glad that that sort of thing is still going on and long may it flourish. This is how the introduction goes. One, two, three, four. Plyam. Three, four. Bom, If I... Yes, the Beatles. I grew up with the Beatles, of course, because I'm that sort of age. And in my teaching career, in my choir conducting career, I always come back to them because their use of melody and harmony is so original and so clever. And uh, we did, a few years ago in Taunton, we did a medley and we did quite a number of Beatles songs like um, Penny Lane I think was one of the ones we did and this year as you know we're doing If I Fell I think it's um, excellent quality music and I would always try to include it in a programme 